Are you retired and own permanent life insurance? Are you wondering what to do with it? Well, here to talk with us about that is Becca Craig from Buckingham Strategic Wealth. Becca, welcome. Thanks, Bob, for having me. Happy to be here. So you recently wrote an article about this very topic for Retirement Daily. We're eager to have you walk us through what you wrote. Absolutely. Love to. That we are seeing, especially the past two, three months, a a ton of clients asking, I have a permanent life insurance policy and I'm retired or I'm getting ready to retire. I've assessed my portfolio. I've redone my estate plan. I'm totally up to date with my taxes. What do I do with this permanent life insurance policy? And you know, when you find yourself in the you know, quite fortunate predicament of having a permanent whole life policy in retirement um, without a decisive need for it, before writing it off as just something you'll you know, put on the back burner and take care of later, or you know, just to get rid of it, that there are a few steps to consider first um, that are much more optimal for the individual based on their circumstance and situation. That there's been an uptick in popularity of the conversations of you know, bolstering a portfolio or using it uh, permanent life insurance to create tax advantaged income streams. And before you ask the question of what you ought to do, it's really the first first question is, you know, what can you do with your insurance policy in retirement? And so um, the article really goes through the steps to take as the individual and whether it's with your insurance agent or advisory team um, to be able to assess, you know, what can you do? Um, so um, the first recommendation is to get a current uh, 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 through uh, an enforce uh, illustration. What, what, what is that? What, what does that look like? Absolutely. So it's, it's getting current with whatever the policy is that, um, you know, most individuals wouldn't make um, a major portfolio allocation or purchase real estate without inspecting it first. And, you know, the same thought and philosophy ought to be applied to permanent life insurance that the most effective tool, you know, sometimes we have clients that send in annual statements or maybe even the original policy documents from the 90s. And while that's great to look at as a supplement, really what we're looking for is an enforce illustration, sometimes referred to as an enforce ledger or just simply enforce. Um, that the, it basically is the the X-ray into the current values of the of the policy. So, cash value, death benefit, cost of insurance, any type of expenses. Um, if there's a loan on the policy, to be able to project future values and really the simplest way to get one is if you're still in contact with your insurance agent to reach out that way. You can also call the customer service line and speak to a representative to request one. Some companies allow for you to log into an online portal, register an account and request one, um, or you can request them by snail mail. Um, either, <laughs> either way, it's just the importance of actually um, getting one. And then once um, you, you find the most effective way to communicate that I need an enforced illustration, you know, depending on the type of permanent insurance policy you have and you know, for the intents and purposes of the enforce, dividing that into two major policy types of whole life insurance and then your universal, variable universal um, policies. That if you have a whole life policy, it's pretty straightforward. Most, most agents and representatives will know what you're talking about if you call in and say, I need an enforced illustration. You might also, um, if you're um, retired and still paying insurance premiums, ask for a paid up illustration showing what the policy would look like should you pay up the policy to not have to pay or contribute premiums anymore. A um, little, a little bit more uh, intensive with the variable or universal life policies. Um, you're going to want to ask for a variety of different types of enforced illustrations. So with the, the current enforced illustration, but also um, what you would need to um, either pay into the policy to continue it because those universal and variable universal life policies, you know, their performance and success was really based on their underlying sub accounts or the investments in the account. And so what it would look like to be paid up to an, a given age, as well as you know, given either current or future assumption rates um, to make sure that those policies can stay in place or even what the cash value might look like. So a little bit more labor intensive on those policies, but um, absolutely worth it. And your agent or um, the company will know exactly what retirees are requesting. Right. And, and the use and value of, a, uh, of such an illustration is to get a sense of whether the cost is worth the benefit of this policy? Yeah, one aspect, absolutely, that it's, it's really what is most efficient and effective based on you know, the evidence 
of the Enforce illustration. So whether that's you know, retaining the policy and then positioning it to serve a purpose in your portfolio, whether that's um, to be able to create an uh, income tax-free death benefit for a beneficiary or um, a charity, some individuals, if there's a there's a popular uh, strategy out there that if there's a terrible year in the market, not that we've ever seen that um, in recent history, that instead of withdrawing from the portfolio, if, if someone needs income that they could supplement with um, the cash values with a either a withdrawal or a loan uh, for that given year, um, there's no right or wrong answer. And in, in my I come from a background in the insurance, the large the, one of the big four um, large broker dealer insurance world that, you know, there's no right or wrong strategy. It's, it's being able to assess and really from that enforce seeing the cash values and, you know, seeing if it's, if it's worth it from a standpoint of your personal situation, as well as what you want the policy to do in retirement for you um, to consider those options. Hmm. Um, you also mentioned in the article some other things that folks need to do with respect to their insurance policy. Uh, reviewing beneficiaries seems like a, a, an always popular but sometimes forgotten task. Absolutely. That, you know, whether the policy the last time that beneficiaries were updated was, we commonly see when people, um, you know, purchase the policies that, you know, sometimes um, those beneficiaries change or your goals change that instead of leaving money in a bequest to a charity, it might be an optimal consideration to leave the death benefit of a policy. Um, that really, that's a conversation both to be had with you know, the insurance agent, your advisory team, and, and really you know, yourself as the retiree. Um, beneficiary changes can often be done online. Um, and so another p- point in the article is, you know, to get current and treat the policy like you would your savings account or your Fidelity or Schwab or TD or any one of your major portfolio um, investment accounts that getting an online account can really give you current access. And it doesn't have to be this um, theory of what is my policy doing, but you can actually log in and and see what it's actually done and what you expect it to do. Right. And then in in terms of your estate plan, obviously life insurance can play a big role uh, in, in the, in estate planning. What, what are your thoughts there? Absolutely. That we, we don't have a crystal ball to predict what the future will will yield. I mean, right now, most, and a lot of our clients won't have to um, kind of sift through or deal with any type of, you know, estate tax issue. A lot of policies were taken out like second to die policies back in the eighties and nineties to curtail or pay for an estate tax. We don't know what those limits will look like in the future. And so as you know, new legislation is written, as um, you know, goals and um, change to really just have your advisory team and really, the, you know, once you have all the information and, and then decide what you want to do with it, to make sure to bring everyone into the fold, the insurance agent, your advisors, your attorneys, that to consistently update and use that policy for how you intend to use it today, as opposed to what it might do, or we thought it would do when we first took it out. Mm. Uh, you mentioned working with the team of advisors. Uh, it seems like all these decisions with respect to life insurance or other things, making decisions in a vacuum without having the input of your team uh, might be foolhardy. And, and in the article, you talk about the importance of working with the entire team. Right. To get everyone on the same page. Absolutely. That, you know, decisions in finance, as we know, that one is, it's, it's not a vacuum that decisions made in your investment portfolio impact your taxes. They impact your estate plan. They impact you know, your current income that it's, it's really the same. And I would encourage um, individuals that you know, read the article that are considering what do I do with this policy, you know, to really think of it like another type of account or another piece to your portfolio and not so much in terms of you know, rates of return or, you know, market fluctuation, but, but really how you approach it. And so making sure you have, access, have enforced illustrations and, you know, have an advisory team that, that has all those items so that they can make sure to orchestrate everything as a smooth instrument, as opposed to just going solo on it. All right. Well, Becca, I want to thank you for, uh, once again, for sharing your knowledge and wisdom about this topic. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Thanks for having me, Bob.